Okay, right. Okay, so thank you, Amanda. I have Amanda here with me, um, and we're just going to be talking about Amanda's journey. Now, Amanda has just made a career change. Uh, she will tell you a little bit about that in a minute. But um, Amanda got her, her, her big news recently this week. We will go into a bit more detail, but I just want to talk about her journey from when the point where she decided she wanted to make this career change to the day when she got the offer. So welcome Amanda and thanks for doing this. And I'm sure that people, anybody who listens to this will definitely be inspired by your story. Thank you and welcome again. Okay, so we just start by just uh, asking you to, you know, introduce yourself and uh, as, as little or as much as you would like. So thank you very much for having me. So my name is Amanda Malife. And I've been working with Veronica for, I think, just over a year now, isn't it? Or a year, a year and a half, I think, is the start of our journey. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, what do you do? Well, before well, now. Yeah. I will, be, I will be working in project management, just secured my first job. Yeah. But prior to that, um, I was a qualified teacher. I had taught for eight years. And before that, obviously, I'd done um, various jobs um, from, my, when, from when I first arrived in the UK and then thought well, I already had a first degree from, uh, from Zimbabwe, where I'm originally from. And I thought that teaching, I just needed to do a PGCE for one year to then qualify to do that. And that seemed the simplest route into um, a qualified a civil service job. And so I taught for eight years. And during the time that I met Veronica, I was sort of getting to the point where I was doing supply teaching uh, because we move around quite a lot being an army family. So it was really hard to you know, stay in a school long term. And so supply seemed to be uh, the best thing that worked for myself and my family. And so I've been doing that for a while. And then mid 2018, we're in Warwickshire, Livington Spa and Veronica approached me one Sunday after church and just said, oh, you know, I'm doing this road show in Birmingham. Why don't you come along and see what it's all about? Mm -hmm. So I took my husband along. He didn't really have a choice. And uh, <laughs> we spent the day with Veronica and Tunde and listened to some presentations from a couple of people that they work with on the program. And it very quickly became apparent to me that project management and teaching had a lot of transferable skills. And I thought, oh, this, and I could relate it to my teaching. And so I thought this is something that maybe I could have a go at. But at the time, I don't think I was quite ready to make that commitment because she said, oh, it's IT project management. And I thought, okay, if anyone who knows me will tell you that I am the least technical person. <laughs> ever like I just know how to make calls on my phone and uh, send messages and that's it mm. so I was like oh, okay I'm not quite sure that I'm ready to make that commitment but in the interim I think soon after that I did start a job uh, working for the church doing sort of project admin work and I quite enjoyed that and I thought mm. you know I'm thinking that maybe I could make that switch. And so I signed up for Sterling Careers. I think it was in the, in the November. And I said, right, I'm ready to, um, you know, roll my stocks up and get going. Yeah. And so that's what we did. And mm. uh, very quickly, you know, I listened to all of the lectures. There were some lectures that had been pre-recorded. I listened to those to get me a solid grounding of what we were going to do. And through the practical experience that I gained from uh, Sterling Careers alongside um, the qualifications that I found, you know, you have to study for. So I was studying for my uh, foundation certification, project management, as well as doing the practical aspects of the work, working with Sterling Careers. And I think that really helped mm. to cement what I was learning because now I had, you know, practical examples of what mm. I was reading in the book. Yeah. Um, the exam, I mean, the exam itself wasn't particularly difficult, but you've got to have a solid knowledge of what yep. you're reading in the book. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's not just a walk in the park, but yeah. I think I started reading for the exam, I would say probably in December and by April, June, I was quite ready to write the exam. And so I did. I was lucky that lockdown happened when it did. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a lot more time to focus on what I was doing and really, I think, cemented the idea that I was making the right choice because... Mm -hmm. Supply teaching was fine, but it wasn't a secure, um, it wasn't a secure income and looking to the future, it didn't look like it had longevity as much as project management and IT project management in particular had yeah. 
And as COVID showed, you know, everything is online now. So I figure there is a very great and yeah. sustained future in mm -hmm. IT project management or in IT skills and digital tech. So it's important mm -hmm. for us to upskill ourselves if we yeah. have a chance yeah. of even being in the job market and having a job should lockdowns happen. Yeah. So, um, so I, I, I've done my qualification. Can I just now. pause you and ask you for a minute? So um, about the sort of emotions or feelings you had. So if I just, if we backtrack a little bit. So we met and I invited you um, uh, just to let people know. So the roadshow is really a free, it's almost like a, what you call like a free masterclass where we're just talking about all things project management, business analysis, uh, project support and things like that, just as an introductory, a taster as it were. And that's where Amanda came on and you know, she picked a few things. And I like the fact that just by attending and listening to those sessions, you already could pick the fact you could, you know, uh, I think that's when it dawned on you that you could transfer some of your skills that you had into uh, project management and it made it easier for you to actually be able to identify the path to take because i think for a lot of people that's where they struggle they're like okay yes i'm interested in, in getting into it but which part should i go mm -hmm. and which um it, it, sometimes it might be difficult for them to work out based on what they have based on the skills and experiences they have to be able to navigate or to actually go or identify which area to go to so you already knew that mm, from listening to all of these things about project management it seems like okay i think i have a few tick boxes there and immediately you knew that that was what you wanted because we talked a couple of times and it was as it was as though you already knew which is very good uh, i know there's some people that might need help you know getting that clarity and all of that now before and then you said for you went away um and then so what really gave you that big push? Because I know you just came to me and said, Veronica, I, I think I'm ready now. What was that? Can you remember what it was? Do you know, I think it was just the fact that I had, um, I'd worked for the church, I'd enjoyed that. And then I came, and then I think we moved to, to Hampshire and uh, it just wasn't happening. And I just think it was, it had been festering for a while, but I yeah. think when we came to Hampshire, it was when I, I finally was like, you know what, I can't, I feel like I can't do this anymore. You know, I, I don't want to teach anymore. I want to do something more with my life. Yeah, I feel yeah, like I, I can achieve that. more. And I think because the boys were a little bit older, you know, a, a year makes such a huge difference. <laughs> and I felt, you know, actually, I, I need to do something for me yeah you know they're okay to look after themselves okay. now so yeah. i can go out there and do it cool that's amazing good stuff okay so now let's talk about the journey so you made this decision and you were like i'm taking the plunge i'm going all in um so i i'm assuming there, there probably will be times where you maybe just felt like god am i really doing the right thing because you mentioned the fact that you're the least technical person and you only you only worry about using your phone and all of that and now here you are you know considering a career into it um how was that for you was it a case of you know whatever i'm just going to put my head in or did you feel like okay maybe i can go and do some stuff get some knowledge first before getting on this journey do you want to just talk a little bit about how that was for you uh i think i would describe myself as somebody who when they do something they go all in cool. I'm, I'm not i'm not a half and half person no, it's I like know. all or nothing um so i didn't although i was fearful i mean you know you do something for for eight years you know mm -hmm. it like the back, the back of, of your hand you don't yeah. even have to think about it yeah um and it was scary i think the fact that right i don't know anything about this um this industry and yeah. there was a, a thought in my mind will i ever get to the point where i can talk about this confidently and mm. sound like i know what mm. i'm talking about mm. and the great thing about being on scl on the scl platform was that we were all learning as we went mm. so you never felt like i'm the it only one who doesn't know you. this Mm. you know and it was a forum where you could ask questions even the yeah. silly questions what yeah. you thought were silly questions and you discover well actually 
everybody else has got the same question mm-hmm. yeah. you know so it was just nice i think having that environment where you could learn you could make mistakes yeah. um and then learn from those mistakes mm-hmm. as part of the group amazing amazing and now you are you are you're just flying so can you just now tell us about you know um that part of the whole e- journey or the experience where you had to start picking up skills because obviously you can't just dream and wish it to happen you have to put in the work can you tell us about you know that work that you put in uh, just in 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 um as briefly as possible so i i think yeah it's really important to start learning the vocabulary uh, fairly early and the great thing about sterling careers is that you have access to all of the skills from day one so you know you had access to jira you had access to confluence and once we had the training session with helen uh, it was you know you had the time you had if you had the time you could then go and practice you know how mm-hmm. to make a wireframe how to make you know use the glyphy diagrams and so forth and the use well, i remember you doing all of that <laughs> yeah so having that at your disposal to practice in your own time was really helpful and uh, you know, being able to phone somebody up and say, oh, you know, I'm stuck on this. I can't remember how to do this. And so I think I'd say within the first couple of months, you know, mm-hmm. you picked up quite a lot about mm-hmm. the skills that you need as well as the tools that you use. Amazing. That's, that, that, that's really good stuff. So guys, that's that community, um, uh, what do you call it? Thing about Sterling Careers, the fact that people are working and collaborating together, sharing and where you are struggling, you can reach out. Um, it's just it's, it's profound now okay let's talk about um by now i'm sure you can talk confidently about what project management is about you know how did you get there because i know you you've saw you in your summary you mentioned the fact that you did exams and all of that um and now you are you've got prince to foundation I, I believe and yes, I you had to do some um uh, what do you call it additional um certifications and training and all of that can you just briefly talk about that and how did that really help your confidence because i think that's another key area as well so do you just want to talk about that briefly in your experience so i think doing the exam the prince Two foundation exam and then i also did um some certifications on uh, on the side like the data protection officer skills yeah. and going through that training as well it just helped, I think, to make me feel more confident that I actually know what I'm talking about. And I think the confidence boost that you get from passing the exam, you think, wow, I can actually do this because I've obtained enough yeah. information to pass the exam. And yeah. as time has gone on, um, it's a few months now, and you know, we, we got to the point where I thought, right, okay, I've done this. I'm ready now to start um, interviewing and going for jobs. And when you are now reviewing your CV, going through your CV, going through the interview process, you can test out, you know, do I, am I actually good enough to make the grade? Do I know enough to be able to land this job? And going back through your notes, you realize, I actually know this. <laughs> you know, it all kind of starts to make sense and yeah. you can remember it all. And so now I'm going through the practitioner, um, through the practitioner syllabus, and I'm thinking, you know, I, I didn't think I knew this much, mm-hmm. but you realize actually you do. Yeah. You do. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, your journey for me has just been, and I think one thing I just want to point out is that is a fact that you followed through because there were a few people who started with you, but they dropped off, you know, I mean, some of them obviously would have, you know, good, good reasons, but um, you follow through. There were times, of course, where you felt like, oh, is this going to happen? I remember. And I just need to say, <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> Keep going and all of that. So now, do you want to share what your experience working with me has been like? So because, yes, we, you came onto my platform and uh, you worked on projects, you picked up skills and were able to sort of guide you and just point you in the direction of where, uh, you should be going in, in terms of what sort of skills uh, you need to be picking up in order to build that confidence. So do you want to talk about that and maybe sort of flow into when you now started putting your CV, what did that entail, what we did, and you know, up until the interview stage? Do you want to just uh, share? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, it was hmm, July, I think, was when I, I did my foundation exam. 
and passed it. And I think by August, September, uh, when you said, right, you're now ready to start applying for jobs, I was terrified. Oh, I was thinking, I am so not ready for this. I do not feel ready at all. Yeah. And so we put, you know, when we've, when we've, when we've done the CV and, and had a look at it, I just thought, gosh, this doesn't seem like it is enough experience for me to get a job. And then um, I remember the first time you said, oh, you need to put out at least 50. Yeah, um, I remember that was the goal. <laughs> Yeah. 50 applications and that just seemed like an impossible task to me like wow like how do you even get to 50 and I'd be reading all these job descriptions and thinking no I can't do that I can't do that but mm -hmm. as the process went on you know I felt okay you know what what's the worst that can happen mm -hmm. what is the worst that can happen give it a go and if you know if, if you don't hear back just keep on going so mm -hmm. I had to really step out of my comfort zone and yep. and, and really push for that and um, then, you know, when obviously you didn't get as many responses back, it was a little bit um, disappointing because you thought, OK, maybe is it me mm. or is it that I don't have enough experience? And then, you know, you start feeling a little bit down. But after reviewing the CV and adding in all the other elements that we kind of hadn't added in the first time, I think it made a really big difference. And yeah. I remember one of the first calls I got from the recruiter. Yeah, tell us about that when you yeah. had the first call. <laughs> It was, it was one of the first calls and um, this recruiter rang me. It was for a contract role, Okay. Uh, I think in Southampton or somewhere not too far away. And he said to me, oh, so what, you know, so what was your expectation salary wise? Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I don't even know. So I said, okay, well, market rate. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, okay, well, that's good because the market rate for this role is 350 pounds a day. And I said, oh, but I mouthed, <laughs> you know, I mouthed a silent what, what? To my <laughs> like i couldn't i couldn't believe it um you know so it was it was quite a large sum of money but anyway um i didn't get that job because the guy said oh they've, they've gone with somebody else who'd, who'd worked with the company before and got and, and worked with them on a contract basis but that just really helped to give me the confidence boost that i needed to to say well you know what if people are looking at my cv then perhaps it is good enough for me yep. to 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 yep. land a role and after that it was you know just i was just on a roll i guess i know you had that. just one interview after the other calls yeah 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 um and so i attended a couple of interviews and the first one i think my first ever interview um i did really well i was shortlisted down to the final two and just missed out um to the other person because i think they had nhs experience and i didn't mm -hmm. so again that really you know gave me a confidence boost and then I attended a couple more, which I didn't um, really make. Uh, the interview, the, the third one, again, it was shortlisted down to the last three and didn't mm -hmm. quite make it. And so I thought, you know what? It is possible um, mm -hmm. to get a project management job, even, you know, though I, I felt at the time, I thought, I don't know if I'm good enough to get a job. And then I had to change my mindset. And I and Yeah, I thought, we had to do that. We had to work on that. I had to change my mindset. And I just thought, you know what? I am good enough. And if I yes. don't get a yes. job with a company, it's not me. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm not the right fit for, for that company, but yes. I have the skills. Yeah. And so cool. that helped me to just see things in a different light. Mm -hmm. And so finally I, I, I got this job um, that I, that I've Hold done. on, we're coming to that. We're coming to that. <laughs> I'm just excited. Don't give it away yet. <laughs> Okay, so so guys, that that is very important. I like the fact that you had to have a mindset shift, you know, um, and that really made a lot of difference. So, if for someone who's probably sitting on the fence and, uh, you know, still second guessing, what would you say? So, what maybe if you summarize your key takeaways uh, from your experience with Sterling Careers? Um, what would those maybe one, two, three, four points be um, so that if somebody is thinking about it, you know, they can go with that and, and you know, hopefully that would, you know, sort of um, help them to make that decision. I think the most important thing that I would say is um, to put in the hard work. You know, it, it, it doesn't just happen. Mm -hmm. um, it may seem like, you know, or you may think at the start that it's going to be easy, but it does require quite a bit of work. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to be able to, to put that in and really give it your all. I think you also need to um, 
really have a good mindset. Yeah. You know, have a positive mindset, regardless of, 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 of what goes wrong. Just be really positive and tell yourself you can do it because it's not always going to go smoothly. There will be times when you feel a bit, you know, deflated, a little times when you feel I can't do this, but just keep a positive mindset and it will happen. And perseverance is, is, is key as well. Uh, you know, I've, I've put in, I was trying to count yesterday and I lost count. I think I put in over 70 applications, you know, uh, so persevere, don't give up. That's really, really important and find. And the last thing I would say is maybe find somebody who supports you. Make sure you have that support network, whether it's, you know, you go out and find yourself a mentor, you find yourself a coach, but just somebody in the industry who can kind I of know guide you. Career, simple, yeah. simple. <laughs> guide, somebody who will guide you and tell yeah. you all the inside info right this is what you need to do and mm -hmm. this is what you you know that this is what you want to be doing okay focus on this because i think it can be quite daunting to try and do it on your own but if yeah. you have somebody who's already in the industry i think that can help you immensely that's good so from your i, I like that that you said that so if um would you if you were to make a comparison between when maybe you were talking to someone or trying to do it on your own and then uh, when you started talking to me and, and what would you say was the difference really? Um, I know you mentioned it a little bit, but I think I want to, I want to hone in on that or hone in on that. What would you say is the difference uh, between what difference did it make for you in your, in your own experience or on your journey? I think that's sometimes if you have a support network, that's not specifically within that industry. Uh, they mean well, yeah, of course. Yeah. They 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 mean well. They they like you and they will tell you all the things perhaps maybe that you want to hear. Mm -hmm. They won't be as tough with you and they don't know the industry. Mm -hmm. So yes, their 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 advice well. works yeah. for that industry that they're in, but it doesn't necessarily work for project management. So I think having somebody who is in the industry who knows what to do mm -hmm. is so much better cool stuff so, so tell us tell us about this job how how did that happen i think that's as we're rounding up uh you have been made an offer do you want to tell us about that um just in very brief summary okay. uh so the so the role that i that i've just um landed is is with uh, the university of portsmouth and it is I suppose in my comfort zone, really, because it's, you know, they've set up a, uh, they're updating their learning management system. And so it's something which is quite familiar to what I've done with Sterling Careers. And so I'm coming on as a project assistant. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that this was a good place for me to start to really get a solid grounding of, um, of what I've learned, show up my skills. It's a six month contract. It's remote working. Amazing. All things which are just perfect for me at this stage because I've got children who are homeschooling so mm -hmm. it was really ideal and I think it's an outstanding university so I said to yeah. them you know they asked me why do you want this job and I said because you know you have outstanding teaching your credentials are really good and it's always good to work in a place where you are going to see good practice in action mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's the best place to start I think amazing oh, I'm, I'm sure you'd have just won them over by <laughs> It was, a, like I said to you, it was literally a 20 Yeah, that, that's interesting. interesting you should share. So Amanda's interview was, was 20 minutes long and, and they were just blown over, you know, and, and I think was it a day or two after you got the call and uh, you were made the offer. So I think my final question for you and for anybody who's listening, do you need to have technical experience to get into the IT space? Yes or no? And listen, if, if me <laughs> being such a massive technophobe could do it, anyone could do it. <laughs> Amazing. So that's good, guys. You've heard it. So you don't have to have a technical background to land a job within the technical or IT space. Uh, there are several other jobs that you can do that do not require that technical uh, knowledge. You don't need to learn how to code and write programs. I've been in this industry nearly 10 years. I've never written a single line of code and I really do not need it. So guys, you've heard it all. Amanda came from 
teaching for what eight years into now she's 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 just landed a job as a project a project assistant within the IT uh, function of a university. She's successfully made a career change and she's happy about it. She's a mom as well. So she was able to juggle everything. She's a mom, she's a wife running a home, preparing, doing all those, uh, developing the skills and exams and all of that. She did it and so can you. So quit sitting on the fence, 2021, let it be that year. Career change into IT is where, that's where, that's the place to look because you get that flexibility her contract is remote working. I've been working at home for 10 months, going to 11 months now. They're, they're just a few industries or, or jobs or career paths or sectors that can give you that flexibility. And it's also rewarding. So I hope that you have found this useful today. I'm super excited, super proud of Amanda because she kept going. She kept, she had her ups and downs, but she kept going and hey, I was so happy when I got, when I saw that message, I was like, yes! And I said to my husband, because of course I tell him, I was like, he said, yeah, she did it. And he said, I'm so impressed with Amanda that she follows because he knows, he remembers when you started and all of that. And hey, it's happened. So it's possible, guys. It is possible. So one final uh, word or, or message for anybody listening today from you, Amanda, before we call it a wrap. Um, so the last thing I'd just like to say is I've decided that this year is the year of opportunities. Um, my husband says this all the time and I, and I, I truly believe it now. It says success mm -hmm. goes to those who dare and act. Yeah. It seldom goes to the timid. Yes. So be timid, but you won't experience success. Yes. You know, good stuff. I love that. I love that. I think we need to, we need to make that a quote or a caption somewhere. <laughs> they used to listen. So there you go. This is it. So you have to just, you, you know, go all in, give it everything. You can't be timid. You can't stay and make excuses. Those two don't go. Success and excuses, nah. It's either, you either take one or the other. The two don't go together. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much, Amanda. And I'm so happy, so proud that this happened and I'm sure that people will be inspired by your story. I remember when we had that, I don't know if you remember when we were talking about your CV and I said, and I actually said, I will share your success story. And I said it, I said in, in, in a couple of months time, I will come and share and hey, we're here, come on. So you say those things and you will manifest them guys. Thank you so much, I'm proud of you and I can't wait to hear you know, how well you're doing. I'm here still giving you support when you need one. Just ping me. Uh, and thank you for doing this, Amanda. Take care. Thank you, guys, and everybody who's going to watch this later. And um, I am Veronica Modupe Yusuf. I, um, I am actually the person that runs Sterling Careers. I'm the founder and CEO of Sterling Careers. Amanda kept refer uh, referring to Sterling Careers. So go look for us. We're online. Our website is on there. Ping me, send me a call, as you know, book a call, and let's talk. Thank you once again, Amanda, and congratulations. Take care. Speak soon. Bye. Thank you, Veronica. Take care. Bye. Bye.